So in this video, we're just going to discuss some of the fundamentals of conditional instructions. Now, conditional instructions allow us to be able to complete a specific instruction based on a condition. So similar to the comparisons that we saw with branches, what we're able to do is we're able to do a comparison and then specify to do another operation based on the result of that comparison without the need to branch around the program or do anything complicated like that. So it allows us to create a more a condensed form of our branching exercises that we were looking at in the previous few videos. So let's discuss a little bit about this with an example. So suppose that I were to move some values into registers. So we'll just move some random values. It doesn't really matter what they are. So I'll move two into R0 and maybe we'll move four into R1. Now what we'll do is we'll compare R0 and R1. And of course, we know that the result of this comparison is that R0 is less than R1, right? Because if we subtract 2 from 4, we get a negative number. Now, in this case, maybe I want to add 1 to register 2 if the result of this was actually less than. If we wanted to do this in the previous videos with the knowledge that we had, what we would do is we would do something like this. We would say, okay, we would branch less than, um, we could call it like add R2, and then we would have like an add R2 that would do exactly that. It would add to the register um, R2, the value one, right? So that would be the idea of what we could do in order to achieve that effect. And then we would have to have a branch over here to skip over it just in case, um, you know, we didn't actually want to do that, right? Just in case it wasn't less than, then we could skip over it and say, like, maybe skip over to like an exit. And that would be, you know, over here. So this would be the way that we would have done this before with just branches, right? And this is not bad, but there's a lot of lines of code for this specific instruction. And really, it doesn't require as much like of this code as what we really want, right? So we can condense this a little bit more using these conditional instructions. So the way that these conditional instructions work is that with things like add, you can add on a condition. So I can say add LT. What that means is add less than. So what will happen is this instruction will only trigger if the comparison that came previous is less than. So if R0 is less than R1 in this case, then we will do this addition instruction. So like I was saying before, we'll try adding one to R2. And let's just see what ends up happening, right? So we can compile and load. We see that we get two and four into those registers. When we do our comparison, you see that the negative flag gets set in the CPSR register. That tells us that the value was less than, right? So two is less than four. And now we come up to this add instruction and it should only add one to R2 if the value of the previous comparison was less than. And we can see that it does add one because the value was less than. So you can see that generally this is how this instruction tends to work, right? And there are other variations of this instruction. It's not just add that we can do this with. We could do this with a lot of the different instructions in ARM. So there's things like, um, like subtraction and multiplication. We could do it with the move instruction as well. So just to give you like another example, we could do something like um, this, like move greater than or equal to uh, the value five into R2, right? This would only trigger if the value was greater than or equal. So you could see when we run this and we go through our instructions, it doesn't actually do anything because the value was not greater than or equal, so the move instruction doesn't execute. So that'd be an example of you know whether it will execute or not. And of course, we can flip this around to be able to get it to execute. Um, there's two different ways to do that. We can move a bigger number to R0, or we can flip this comparison, right? If I flip this comparison, it now does R1 minus R0. So for minus two, that's a greater than or equal to value. And when we run this now, you'll see that we get two, four, you know, we do the comparison. You can see the results in the CPSR register it will result in it moving five in because the result was greater than or equal to. So I just wanted to give you an idea of these sorts of instructions just to show that they exist in assembly, just to be able to make your code a little bit more simple because having to run branches all the time is very complex. We don't wanna to have to do that every single time. So this allows us to reduce the complexity of our applications overall and just write simpler code. 
So that's everything for this video. In the next video, we're going to dive into the idea of functions, which are a bit more of a complicated way of doing branching. But as you probably know, core to most higher level languages is the idea of a function. So we'll dive into more detail to get an understanding of how functions actually work at a low level perspective and get some familiarity with writing functions with ARM assembly.